how to motivate workers. Okay. The question of how to motivate workers to perform is central to our understanding of how organizations of all kinds function. And it is well known that motivation can be an issue in organizations because, well, self-interested behavior by the organization members may not produce a Pareto efficient outcome uh, for the group as a whole, right? So the problem is one of externalities, right? The members of an organization typically do not bear all the costs and benefits of the actions, um, the actions they take and the decisions they make in the organization. So from the perspective of organizational design, the solution to motivation problems is to shape the organization to bring a closer alignment of interest between the organization and its members, right? And, and thereby increase the efficiency of the choices they make. What is really fascinating is that motivation is not just a matter of monetary incentives or monetary transfers, right? As important as, as these are in some cases, re rewards can be dollars, right? But rewards, uh, but uh, they can also be other sorts of resources, right? Such as non-pecuniary incentives like public recognition. And, and this is very important because it might generate intrinsic motivation and create uh, reciprocity among workers. So in this paper, we are going to study uh, leaderboards, which are a mainstay management tool used to encourage employee motivation and improve team performance. And the leaderboard gives um, best and sometimes worst performance performers public recognition within the organization. And, and the logic is that this creates an added incentive for employees to excel in their jobs by exerting greater effort. And yet, despite their ubiquity, we still know little about whether and how leaderboards work, right? And we're going to study the rollout of a leaderboard, digital leaderboard technology platform across different restaurants of a large fast food chain in Puerto Rico. The leaderboard rewarded the lowest average tap time at the drive through right, which is the time taking to process an order once it's placed. I, I will come back to, to, to give you the details of how it works. So let me give you an overview of uh, what we do in this paper. So we have a panel data at the daily store level from one of the store, uh, largest uh, fast food chains in Puerto Rico. All these stores uh, are part of the same chain. Um, and we have hourly data on the orders placed in each restaurant between January 2017 and November 2019. Basically, we have information of all, the, all tickets issued by each restaurant, right, for this period of time. The stores have different stations, and this is very important that, that, that we understand how these stores work or how these restaurants work. That, that they have different stations, so you might think that the, as stations, you might think as desserts, fried products, the guy that peel potatoes, right? Uh, the grill, right? And to work at these stations, workers need to be certified, right? They need to approve, approve the training a program and a practical test in between their shifts. So we also have a daily employee job certifications or the trainings programs that they approved, right? We also have data on daily inventory and waste by import product. And we are going to combine this data with the rollout of a digital leaderboard technology platform across these uh, fast food restaurants in Puerto Rico. And we're going to study three things, right? The first one is that how multitasking with sequential production technology works. Uh, why multitasking? Remember that uh, the leaderboard compares and ranks each store's average tap time at the drive through right? creating a competition that motivates the store managers and, and employees to improve their ranking. But this is just the tap time at the drive through The leaderboard does not incentivize sales at the counter, right? So you may think that if you incentivize say, sales at, at the drive through well, sales at the counter may, may go down, right? May decrease, right? And, 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 and I will show you that in fact, sales at the counter improved and the question is, what are the channels that explain, what are the mechanisms that, that, that explain the, the observed improvements? Do you hire more workers? Do you train more workers? What do you do, right? And then finally, well, now these managers ha 
have the pressure of the competition, right? And the question is, the, did the increase in productivity lead to more waste or turnover? So these are the three questions that we're uh, going to uh, study in this paper. Now, let me give you a preview of our findings. So we find that drive-through performance increased by 4%. As, as a result of, of the introduction of, of this uh, leaderboard. What is really fascinating is that this improvement did not come at the expense of counter sales. Uh, so it means that there, there was a residual demand being unmet, right? And the effect was primarily due to an increase in the number of units sold. And there was no change in the average value per ticket. So let me check the participants just to be sure if, if you basically if you have a question feel free to interrupt me uh, okay let me come back so the effect was primarily due to an increase in the number of units sold there was no change in the average value per, per order and so what about the mechanisms and what we find is that store managers achieved this increase in performance without adding additional workers right they instead they invested time in training employees in additional production tasks. So for example, allowing a worker assigned to in-store hospitality, hospitality to help with increased demand in the kitchen, right? And these effects are consistent with the standard model of multitasking with sequential production technology. So let, let me stop for one second and check if, if you have uh, questions. Okay. Let, let me skip that, that contribution to the literature. Uh, so before I jump into the model, um, let, let me provide more details about the context of our research. So we have data for these 50 re restaurants in Puerto Rico. As I said before, all the restaurants are part of the same uh, company. Uh, and each restaurant has mostly two restaurant managers. Most of the stores have only one and around 40 employees. Each restaurant is organized in two sections, the drive-thru and counter, right? Now, each restaurant has 23 stations or production tasks. And these are, you have here the, the, the stations. So you have automac, you have hospitality, um, uh, the grill, uh, regular menu grill, desserts, um, fry products, security, and so on, cashier, which is very important, uh, and so on. And as I said before, workers need to be certified, right? So uh, to work at these stations. And let me say now something about the leaderboard. So there are two screens visible to the restaurant team. The timer, right? The timer monitors basically provide, pro, 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 the, the timer monitors provide information about the average times at, and car counts at each drive through so basically cars arrive uh, here, right? At the store and the store receives the order. The customers pay at the cashier, right? And finally they receive the order at the end of the line. So the timer provides information about the average time that takes to receive the order, to pay and to deliver the order at each station, right? And it also provides the tag time, which is these two, this number here, Two minutes and fifty-eight, two minutes and fifty-eight seconds, right? Which is the time taken to process an order once it's placed. Um, Jorge. Yeah. Can I have a quick question? Um, do they necessarily have to order on site, or they can on site? Uh, they can order online, and before they depart to collect the order, they can actually finish the order online. Right. It's a good point. These are all orders at the uh, at the automatic. But they also have deliveries and they also have, um, I think here in Puerto Rico, they, they, they at, at this time, like during this period, they introduced these online uh, that you can order uh, basically online um, your order uh, only at the end of the period. But, but for, for, for the data that we have here, basically it's all, all of these is drive through, right? So we don't have that. Yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. Okay, I have a quick question. Uh, so sure. at a given time, how many people do you have in the drive-thru, working at the drive-thru? 
Mm, we don't have that information. We know, um, I, I'll give you, uh, 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 give me two slides and I will tell you what we have, but we don't know exactly where, uh, how many people are working at each station, right? Uh, we only know the certifications. We only know how many employees uh, basically approved the, a specific training program, right? But we don't know how many uh, workers are at, I don't know, peeling potatoes, right? We, we don't have that, okay. right? Okay, and 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 the whole drive through is is one one big as uh, one big station. So the guy delivering the the order at the end is the same guy uh, uh, receiving the cash in the from the guy to the car. No, 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 no. So uh, so basically, remember that for example, we have cashier. This is cashier at the counter, right? But you 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 have all these stations right but and you have uh, oh. uh automac which is the drive through right so basically it's not that you have one station for the drive through and that's it right you have different stations but the efficiency uh uh at the drive through depends of course on the efficiency at the kitchen right so if, if the kitchen is not doing a, a good job well you will have a delay and then of course your tag time will increase so I'm a bit confused. So what, what does the guy at the Automac does? He only delivers the, the, the final thing? Oh, so hold on. Let me, let me show you this again. So basically the guy at the, at these, uh, at the Automac is, is the guy that is here, right? Receiving the order, right? And, and you have uh, the, the guy that is here, right? And they, uh, this guy here received the order. You have the cashier at the automax so the, all these are different stations and you have the guy that delivered the order at the end of the at the, at the end of the lane oh is that clear okay so you so, have all right so yeah so even those those three guys working in the same in the same automac uh only the the automac station is the one who takes the order right exactly exactly okay exactly got it thanks and of Sorry, course um, uh, um, the time it takes to deliver the order depends on the efficiency of the kitchen right yes Sorry, can I have another question um, for sure, clarification? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so these are the restaurants that have both takeout, uh, drive-through, and dine-in. Right, right, right. So do so you basically, have, as do a you good point, do you have, Rico, do you have, sorry, do you have, go, go, sorry, go ahead. Do you have data on dine-in, yeah. dine-in orders? Yeah, uh, so this is what we call at the counter, right? So. If you park your car, you come inside the restaurant, it will go to, through the counter, right? So we, 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 that's, the, that's what, we, what we know, right? We know if you go to the, if you park your car and then you go inside the store, it will go through the counter. But if you go uh, uh, to the drive-through, then it will go through the, it will, it, the, sales, the, the sales will be counted um, as a drive-through sale. That right. answer your question? Yeah, so no, I, I'm just curious because every time, you know, every Saturday we have this family ritual. We uh we order from McDonald's, right? So <laughs> we can we're, we're going to decide whether we dine in or take out depends on you know whether there's a, which one is faster, right? Exactly. So exactly. If we find like okay, it's faster uh, to dine in. There's a long queue in a drive-through. Then we say okay, let's just eat here. Exactly. Otherwise, it would go through a drive-through. So, right. I mean, and the point is the consumer will change their behavior. It depends on which one is faster. Exactly, exactly. It's a good point. So, so that's why, that's why um, a priori, if you incentivize uh, the efficiency at the drive-through, it's not clear that uh, the uh, sales at the counter, this is what you call in sales in, 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 in store, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Will increase, right? It's not clear or, or decrease, right? Uh, and in, and even this uh, fast food uh, chain didn't know what was the effect of these uh, leaderboard technology, right? But it's, it's, that's exactly what we're trying to understand. Uh, one quick question. Uh, the guys who are in the kitchen, do they know mm -hmm. when they receive the order, whether it's coming from an online order or an, a dining order? Do they know that? No, they don't know. So basically, uh, orders arrive, and uh, and uh, you have like a, a panel, like basically that. Uh, basically, this is the orders arrive, and and, as, uh, and they accumulate, right? Uh, independently. So they of cannot this, uh, distinguish. They cannot distinguish exactly. They cannot distinguish if this is for the counter or the driver, mm -hmm. right? Right. Exactly. Okay. Uh, can I have a quick question? Sure. 
So uh, is there any negative uh, spillover effect uh, on the number of people that are in the dine-in? So does that uh, have a negative effect on the tag time? Yeah, so this is a, precisely what we are going to, to, to study in this paper, whether you have these negative spillover effects to sales at the country, right? So give me, please, uh, a couple of slides and uh, oh. Uh, oh, well, I, I think I already told you this. I, 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 uh, I told you this, but, right? But basically what we find is that drive through performance increased by 4%, but did not come at the expense of the country sales. Country sales increased by 1.2%, right? So the question is, why is that? If you, if you think about uh, the multitasking problem, you will expect that sales at, at the country will decrease, right? Mm. So uh, the question is, why is that you have that both sales at the counter and sales at the drive-through increase, right? And, and, and then I will have a simple model that will help us to understand uh, a bit more what, what's going on. Sure. But the counter sale can be a dine or take away, right? Both? Right, exactly. You can, you can basically, the, the, key, the, the key point is whether you go inside the store. If you go to the inside the store, then that will go to the counter, right? If you stay in your car, that sale will go to the drive-through. Yeah, but, this, but there'll be a big difference if you choose to dine in the restaurant, you will, you will use more uh, labor force, right? If you just uh -huh. take away, then, then it's, it's gonna save some labor. Well, that, but, that, but this is endogenous, right? We, we don't know no. exactly what's the effect, right? And then and, and this is precisely what we are trying to understand. Yeah. Why is that both sales at the counter and the drive and at the drive through increased, right? Um, my, uh, I, I was expecting a negative effect, like uh, the classic multitasking uh, problem, right? That you incentivize one task and then you stop paying attention to the other task and that's why sales at the counter may go down. But what we find here is the opposite, that both went up, right? But hooray, uh, who, who all can look at the leaderboard? Can the kitchen staff look at the leaderboard as well? So basically the, uh, the manager of the store mm -hmm. is the one that is in charge of that, is the one that looks at the leaderboard. Of course, all, of, all the team can look at the leaderboard. The, I'll, let me show you in a minute. Oh, I don't have a picture here. Uh, sorry, I don't have the picture. But basically the leaderboard are two screens inside the store, right? And basically, of course, uh, the employees are extremely busy, right? So the one who really pays attention to the leaderboard, I think is the, is the, is the manager, right? Right, so, so going back to what Luciana was asking that, you know, so I think any improvement in efficiency, efficiency would be like a minimum function of the efficiency of all different units, right? If the kitchen exactly. is the slowest, right? Then you right. have to improve the kitchen, right? But if right. they can't distinguish between an order placed through the drive-through versus on counter, so it's definitely not the kitchen driving the effects. No, no, no. But but the kitchen is that is that you only have one kitchen, right? Yeah. So if the production function of the kitchen kitchen basically, I, I think this will be clarified. But the, the key is that the think about the production function, and this is how we are going to specify in a, in the model. Think about the production function of sales at the counter and sales at the drive through That production function depends on the kitchen. Uh, for, for the sales at the, at the drive through that production function depends on the kitchen, right? But the sales at the counter, also that production function depends on the kitchen, on the effort you have, the training you have, right? How efficient are you on the, at the kitchen station, right? Okay. And, yeah, you only, and, you, and you don't have only one station. You have yeah. different stations, right? Yeah. That, that yeah. answer your question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. More questions? Okay. Okay, so let me show you the leaderboard. So basically the leaderboard um, compares and ranks each store tag time at the drive through So suppose you are, we are store N, right? So basically the leaderboard shows, um, uh, shows you the stores in the top three of the ranking here, right? Can, I don't know if you can see, can you see my, my clicker? Okay, 
uh, the stores at, um, so the leaderboard shows you the stores in the top three of the ranking, the stores above and below you, but also the stores at the bottom of the ranking. And restaurants have uh, one lane in the drive through only three restaurants have two lanes. So of course we, we exclude, we, we, we try different things, excluding, controlling uh, for these three restaurants and, and the results are, are, are very similar. Okay, so now what I wanna do is just to provide a very simple model that will help us uh, to understand and, and interpret the results that we have, right? So suppose that the store manager can invest time in training employees in different production tasks. So you have the counter, you have the drive-through and the kitchen. You can include as many as you want, but let's, for simplicity, let's just skip these this three, which are the most important. And, and let's denote those as uh, TC, TD, and TK respectively, right? And let T, the vector, uh, let this T, the vector of training invested in different production tasks. And T generates a cost, of course, for, for the store managers, and we're going to assume that this cost is uh, strictly convex. Oh, sorry. So if managers accept effort, TC uh, at the counter, TK at the kitchen, her production function, yeah, if the manager exert uh, effort, TC and TK, the production function will be QC, which is equal to mu, which is a, basically a function of TC and TK. Similar, if the manager accept effort TD at the drive through and TK at the kitchen, the production function uh, will be Q of D, which is just a function of the effort uh, at the drive through and the kitchen. And we are going to assume that uh, these two production functions are concave. Now, the principal, right? Uh, who is the principal here? So the principal are the upper level managers. Um, the principal observes a signal. Basically, net sales. And the net sales is equal to the net sales at the counter plus net sales at the drive through. That's what they are interested in. And we are going to assume that this signal basically is equal to the production function at the counter plus an error and the production function at the drive through plus an error. Right? And we are going to assume that these two errors are. Um, random variables independently and normally distributed. We can, you can relax this assumption, you can assume that they are correlated and, and you will find a very similar result. Now, there is a signal X2 related to your efficiency uh, at the drive through right? Um, which is also related to the leaderboard, right? And that uh, signal X2 is observed by the principal, but also by, by the manager of the store. And the X2 basically is just a function of the effort at the drive through and the kitchen. And we have an error for, for that signal. We are going to assume that basically that salary for the store, um, uh, the store manager is linear and has a monetary and a non pecuniary component. The new non pecuniary component is in red, right? The principal offers a base wage and a linear piece rate contract. But store managers also benefit from the public recognition that depends on the performance of the store at the drive through these two, A2, X2, right? Now, store managers, this is the standard in the um, uh, Holmes room milligram paper. Store managers want to maximize their uh, certainty equivalent payoff, which is just the value of CE such that it's equal to the expected value of the utility minus the cost. Uh, First thing, okay. just to quick question. Yeah. Can yeah. Can you go back? So W cannot be interpreted in dollar terms, right? Right, right. Basically, basically these A1 and A2 are the constants that translate the efficiency at um you I mean you can. It's just that you just need to change the A2, right? A2 is the one that maps your efficiency at the drive through to dollar terms, right? So it's, it's kind of uh, a willingness to pay kind of a thing, right? Exactly. It's, it's, the, it's a kind of a willingness to pay for, for this public recognition. It's, it's a fantastic point, right? But do, do these managers get punished 
in terms of if you know they want to make it quick and along the process they will have to create more waste so that means the production mm -hmm. costs will be higher do they get punished for that well, they don't get punished for that but um um but yeah we we we, we studied that in this paper and um and give me a couple of slides and i will show you uh what yeah basically i can give you the preview we find that waste increased but increased by 1.5 percent the, the effect is really really small like increased by 40 dollars right which is super super small but um and and, and honestly I, we don't know why is that small, right? It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic point, right? Same thing with turnover. We, we didn't find uh, an increase in the turnover for, mm. for the storage, right? Just I have a question about this W function also. W uh -huh. function, this is the contract, isn't it? That the manager has with the company, how this manager gets, in, get, gets rewarded. Right. So. That's the case. Uh, what, what about the the cost incurred by the manager of working harder to monitor assiduously the performance of uh, the employees of the company? And also, what about the idea that uh, these variables uh, mm -hmm. x1 x x1 has to be positive and W has to be positive also. So log normality might work better in your setup than normality. Yeah, so basically that's a fantastic point. You're um, basically anticipating my uh, proposition. But, um, but basically, uh, let, me, let me start with the first question. The contract is beta and A1. That, that's the contract for the store manager. Right, uh, these these uh, uh, chain uh, has uh, a standard uh, linear uh, piece rate contract. Um, the second one was that so so right so basically we are assuming that uh, the the way that the correct interpretation for a two x two is just as uh, Girish mentioned is just the willingness to pay for 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 this recognition. Now the effort goes here in CT. So that's why the managers need to maximize this certainty equivalent, right, payoff, which is equal to the utility provided by the, the, uh, 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 these uh, um, uh, uh, monetary and non-pecuniary incentives minus the cost. I, I mean, you are right that uh, this goes, I, I think, uh, right. So, so we, what we're going to soon later is that, um, sorry, so what was your question again? Is that, that, that answer your question or you, that the cost uh, goes here? Yeah, that, that, that answers it very clearly, thank you. But, it, but also there's the restriction on these variables being positive. Right, that's a good point. The assumption yeah. means that they can be, go from minus infinity to plus infinity. Yeah, yeah, so that's a great point. Uh, and, um, I will show you in a minute that what you need is some constraints on the cost. And basically, since we have for just to simplify the exposition here, we are going to assume that the production functions are linear, right? And the second thing is that uh, we are going to assume that the uh, functions are strictly convex. Now, going back to your point, remember what we are assuming that, that, that what is the standard in these models is that store managers care about the certainty equivalent payoff. So basically what they want to maximize is not the utility minus the cost, right? Which can be positive or minus infinity, right? Because you have these normal errors. They care about the expected value of that, right? That's what they are maximizing, this certainty equivalent payoff. And that the, answer you, your question, Kenneth? You also have the same, yeah. the, the two incentives are not a link. Because the monetary incentive is not linked with the other incentive. So, sorry, can, can you repeat your question again? You assume there's no link between the two types of incentives? Okay, so let me, let me get there. Let me get there, uh, which is basically what we have. So we're going to assume that a linear production function and a quadratic cost function. 
And this is the purpose. Jorge, Jorge, can I, sorry, uh, I don't want to delay you further, but isn't the W function discontinuous because you can actually see if you're among the top three or the bottom three, but in between you can't see your rank. So that makes the W function discontinuous, right? No, no, okay, no, no, but, 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 but the way, that's a good point. But how we uh, uh, notice that basically we are not assuming that this is a ranking. We are just assuming that this is a continuous function, okay. right? Uh, uh, but this new here, new T of D, T, K, right? Yeah. So for simplicity, of course. Uh, uh, yeah. so, uh, uh, so basically if you are doing pretty well, your, your value will be pretty high and you really like that. Yeah. But the way we model here recognition is not, is not as in the tournament model, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this it. is just a, a linear production function, uh, uh, just to simplify the exposition. Yep. Okay, so let me go to the proposition. So what, we've, uh, what this model tells us is, is, is something very interesting. Of course, it's a very simple model, so, so, so you should be careful, but basically the proposition says that if the selling activities at the counter and the drive-through are perfect substitutes, right? Basically, the cost C, C of D is equal to zero. And the pairs of training efforts, T, C, uh, uh, effort at the counter, effort at the kitchen, and the pair effort at the kitchen and effort at the drive through are complements. Then you have a unique T, right, that maximizes the synergy equivalent payoff. Moreover, the incentives at the drive through increase effort levels at all the stations. Counter, kitchen, and drive through. And second, it increases the production. It increases the production at the. It increases the production at the counter and the drive through. So notice that one way to understand the results that we have, the empirical results, is to understand this assumption. So the key assumption here, right, is that there is this pair of training programs that are accompanied. So the training at the kitchen and the training at the counter, and the training at the kitchen, and the training at the drive-through. So, but you have this overlap for the kitchen. That's the key for our result, to understand why is that you don't have the standard multitasking result. The standard multitasking result will be that uh, the derivative of Q, uh, C with respect to A2, um, uh, derivative of Q, uh, derivative of Q, D with respect to A2 increases, but the derivative of QC, uh, production function at the counter with respect to A2 decreases. But this, this is the key assumption why you don't have that result, right? So, so let uh, me... Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, can I stop here? Yeah. So you are saying that these um, counter sales and the drive-through sales are a perfect substitute, and I assume that's mm -hmm. from the perspective of the manager. Exactly, exactly. In terms exactly. of how they contribute to their salary reward, right? Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, do you think that the effort that the manager has to put in for these two type of sales are the same? Mm -hmm. um, no, they are not the same. Uh, we have, um, that's a pretty good point. We, we, we have, I didn't include that here, but we have a proposition that grants these partial derivatives, right? And you will see that still the monetary incentives will have a larger effect, right? So, which means that efforts are not the same, of course, across these production stations, right? And it depends on the levels of, it depends on the incentives that, um, that these two components of the incentives. So remember that the incentives have, the incentives, uh, uh, this incentive uh, scheme has two very important components the monetary component and the non-procuring component. The monetary component is beta plus A1, X1. The non-procuring component is A2, X2. So of course the optimal, the not optimal, the equilibrium levels of efforts will depend on A1 and A2. But what we show is that under very general assumptions, the monetary incentive still is, is, is very, very important for the model. Okay, uh, quick question. Uh, what is CCD? Okay, so these are just saying that the selling activities, right? This is the cost of, this is the cross partial. Cross partial, okay. yeah, that's fine. Cross partial, exactly. Got it's it. Zero. A quick question here. So um, 
I, do you think this, this assumption is required? Because the way I see you have, you've played your model, the kitchen doesn't really know whether the food is going to the counter or at the drive through correct? Right. As but long you as... Know what, like, uh, you, you have mentioned that so many times that I need to check that. But that, that's, um, that's my intuition. But let me, please uh, uh, allow me to check that. But let, let's say that yes. Basically, because we went there and, and what I saw is that, and what the managers told us is that orders arrived, right? And they stuck together. So, so you just see that the next order is, is a burger, is a, I don't know, and then you will do that, right? Correct, correct. So if, if that is in, in fact the case, then I would assume that as long as you increase the training in uh, the kitchen, your productivity will increase in both cases, even if they're not substitutes. Right, good point. But remember that here, the, the efforts are endogenous variables. So this is, this, is an, this is an equilibrium output of the model. You, you're only changing A1 and A2. As, you are the principal. That's what I mean. You are the principal. So the key is that how do you align incentives inside the firm? And you have these two levers, the monetary incentives and the non pecuniary incentives. The question is, when is that you introduce this leaderboard, these non pecuniary incentives, and you increase the efforts at all the stations, and you increase production at the counter and the drive through. That's, that's what we were trying to understand. When is that? Of course, this, is a, this just provides a sufficient condition, but, but you, you can relax the, the, this is just one case, right? Uh, maybe it's a, it's, a, it's a super small set of, so think about the conditions that satisfied uh, these two points here, one, two, and three. Maybe our set is pretty small. Maybe you can relax the, the, the assumptions that we have and you will find the same result. This is just a sufficient condition. Okay. Great. Thank one, you. One, one, one quick point about Girish. So Girish, that will work if the kitchen is the bottleneck, right? If the, if, so efficiency is a function of both the kitchen's efficiency and the second unit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, if it's, so it could differ. Yeah. All right. Cool. Exactly. 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 Great. Great, great, great questions. Um, okay, so now let me tell you a little bit more about the data, and 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 then we will I will, I will come back to the model at the end. So um, we have, um, I, I said this, uh, fifty eight res, uh, restaurants, right? Uh, we have hourly data from January two thousand seventeen to November uh, two thousand nineteen, and then. Uh, for net sales, units sold, number of tickets, and average value per ticket. So net sales at drive-through uh, for these uh, firm, on average, $26,000. Uh, at the counter, $13,000. So we know already that uh, sales at the drive-through are very, very important for this uh, firm. And for the whole store, $40,000. Units sold, well, well, we don't know how, what is the correct interpretation of this unit sold, but 21,000 units sold. Number of tickets and the average value per ticket is uh, $7.5. Oh, jeez, sorry. Oh, no, this is not good. Let me put it here. Number of employees. So I, I mentioned before that uh, stores have... Um, there are 30.5 employees per store, right? Um, of course, we have data about the new employees, uh, only okay. hiring activity. Yes? Sorry, if you've, is it possible there's 37 uh, people per store if you're training two people a week at the, to be a cashier? Sorry, sorry, I, 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 it cut out for me. Can, can you repeat sorry, the question? If you're, if you're training two people a week to be a cashier in terms of their uh -huh. certification, how can... An, the average store really have 37 workers. Oh, basically, uh, the, you, the, basically, workers can have different skills, right? So you can have, and, and mo most of them have like three or four skills. It means that the manager will tell you, okay, today you will help me here at the cashier. Today you will help me peel in potatoes, right? So managers depend, on, but, but in order to do that, the workers need to approve the certifications, right? The training program. So the manager decides, uh, the ma managers have autonomy to, to say, okay, these number of workers will work 
at this station and this worker will go to the cashier. Now, of course, not all of them uh, approve the training program of the cashier. the cashier. The cashier is the key one here, right? Also, cashier at the drive through and cashier at the other counter, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, well, I've, having been in those positions for myself, I understand the setup. Uh, but um, I still don't understand if the mean number of people is 37, but you're basically training 100 people a year. I don't see how those two statistics can, can turn find over. Turn over. I mean, it's, it's McD's, so in the uh, US, yes. Yeah, so no, I, I, well, yeah, given how uh, many weeks I lasted at Burger King, that's fair enough. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I missed the, the last sentence, the, your, your last sentence, but yeah, it's turnover. Turnover is close to 70%. 70% annually, right? So it's, it's pretty high. Okay, um, let me go to the, uh, the training program. So um, um, as I mentioned before, um, I remember that to work at these stations, this is what I just said, the workers need to be certified. So basically means that they need to approve the training and the practical test. And, and there are two types of training program, the initial one, which is, uh, we know if is the first time an employee is trained in a specific production task, or it could be a follow-up of previous certifications, uh, certification approved, right? And we also have the data if uh, the employee basically approved or not uh, the, the, the training program. And, and here you, you, you have the uh, distributions, right? Finally, uh, leaderboard. Uh, for each person, the implementation of this leaderboard occurred at different moments in time. Uh, so you will see that some, some stores uh, uh, implemented this technology uh, in, uh, this is uh, uh, March uh, 2019, uh, and so on. Like, from what we know, they didn't have a clear rule. They just said, okay, now we will go to these, uh, with these stores, these other stores. Um, and, and then in the, the paper, we have a bunch of uh, checks just to show that, uh, we don't find any uh, pattern that, that, that will be a concern for our estimations. So Jorge, I have a question. So the first one who adopted the, the leaderboards could kind of see the whole thing. And as it grew, they saw less and less <laughs> of the market, right? Sorry, so what do you mean? So uh, the first stores who adopted the leaderboards could actually see like the whole thing, right? And as more stores adopted the thing, they, they were diluted. Like they could see less and less percentage. No, 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 of it's the... the opposite. The, the first 20 stores will compete against these 20 stores, right? Because, sorry, because the other stores will not have the technology, technology, right? As the numbers of stores implement this new technology, you have more players, right? Yes, yes, that's exactly what I mean. For, so the first oh, ones okay, could actually sorry. see the whole thing in the, in the in the leaderboards, and as you go on, they can see uh, like a less less percentage of the of the of the players. You know, uh, I mean, they have less yeah. and less information about the whole market. But you still know the top three, the the the, the top uh, the three at the bottom, and the ones above and below you, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is uh this goes to uh. I think it's uh, Simon's question. We also have daily inventory and waste by input product. So we can calculate the waste as a proportion of the users. So basically we have initial inventory minus final inventory, uh, 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 and this is the quantity waste. And the waste will be just the quantity waste, sorry, this is the quantity used. The waste will be the quantity wasted divided by the quantity used. And uh, this firm has, uh, four uh, types of uh, waste, right? The promo, which are the coupons or free products that the managers uh, offer. Complete waste. Uh, this is when a complete item is wasted, right? So a complete burger. Incomplete waste. This is when a component of the item is waste, wasted. And employee food. Basically, these are it, items eaten by, by employees. So, so this is the first paper that, that, we, uh, that, that, we, that we have. So what we're gonna do is extremely simple. We, we're just going to um, 
our, our empirical strategy is, is, is extremely simple. We're just going to estimate an event study type specification. You have different outcomes, Y, S, T, for store S uh, at week T, right? Oh, sorry. And uh, uh, the outcomes will be net sale, unit sold, number of tickets, number of certific certification, but also turnover and, and so on and so forth. All the measures I, measured, I, I, I told you before, controls, we are going to include a store and week fix effect, and we are going to cluster, uh, send errors are clustered at the store level. Okay, so let me start with the, uh, 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 let me give you the, show you the results. So net sales increased by uh, 4%. This is about close to 1,500 per week per store after the implementation, right? Uh, and uh, of course, the, the uh, remember that um, the effect was stronger for the automac, but also the mean for the automac is higher, right? And uh, here I have the event study uh, for the whole store, the event study uh, for the net sales at the drive-through, and at the counter, right? So this this was like the first puzzle. Why is that net sales go up? Uh, at the automac and at the counter. Now, because, because of course, managers could have prioritized uh, the drive-through KPI over and monitor uh, performance at the counter, right? Uh, but what we show is that net sales basically uh, improve at the automac and then at the counter. Next, the effect was not due to uh, the average value. It's not because the average value per ticket increased. Right. Instead, the number of units and tickets, in, uh, the number of units sold and tickets increased. Right. So uh, tickets went up um, by almost um, uh, twenty percent. And I have to, Why is that so, necessary a puzzle? I I don't see that's a puzzle to me. I think that's quite intuitive to me. Because like, you know, if you want to make it quicker, so you train the kitchen to uh, cook faster, but I mean, all the food, whether you serve at the counter or the drive through they all come from the same kitchen. So if a kitchen mm -hmm. can cook up faster, then you can serve faster in both places, both, you know, both the drive through and the, uh, and the dine-in. So I don't see there's a, you know, any, you know, puzzling here. I agree, Hore, because your model also assumes complementarity in the production, right? So you should. But, but, but that, that's because I'm telling you the results. But uh, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, yeah. for also, the last, also, like, we, we spent like a year working with this firm. And uh, th let me tell you this, the firm didn't even know that, right? That, that both went up. They were expecting the opposite. They were expecting the standard multitasking problem, right? So, um, yeah, it could be the puzzle that uh, is a good point. I mean, uh, honestly, it, it took us quite time to understand why is that both went up. And, and we, the model helped us a lot, but, but, um, but you're right, it, it could be uh, pretty obvious. All right, one related point that, you know, since you find that both um, over the counter and um, the drive through sales go up, can you not back out like a common component to understand where the efficiency gains were coming from? Where was, was it the kitchen? Uh, I'll, I'll go there. I'll go there. Okay. I'll go there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically more customers were served. And this is basically what we heard from the managers uh, uh, from these uh, firm is that when you go to these fast food uh, restaurants, this is what Simon said before, you check the line and you have a long line you check the, the, the uh, 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 inside the store, but if it's not good, you will go to the next store. So the key is that you need to have a short line. That's the key here. And that's how they, the, the, that's why they introduced, well, they didn't know that, that this was the effect, but that was the motivation behind uh, these technology. Now let's talk about the mechanisms. Um, the first thing is that store, Store managers have a great deal of autonomy. They, they can increase the number of workers, they can hire more workers, uh, they can fire workers, right? And what we find is that store managers achieve this increase in performance without adding additional workers, right? So, um, super flat. So, they are not adding workers. Instead, what they did is what 
Simon and Tushar said, which is uh, quite obvious, is that if, <laughs> instead of they invested time in training employees in addition for in additional uh, production tasks. So basically, what you what what the managers did is that you shift a, a worker that was working or that was assigned to in-store hospitality to to help with the increase in demand in the kitchen desserts, fried product, and grill and assembly. And and this is what what we show here is that of course uh, activities at the drive-through. And, and all of these are uh, tasks uh, at the kitchen right when up. And I also have the end of the study for that. And so now we, we, we train more workers uh, in, in these activities. And then what we, what we find is that the workers who were at different station tasks, hospi like hospitality, lobby parking, cleaning and maintenance, uh, th those were uh, the workers that were relocated to these uh, positions of, at, at the kitchen. So hospitality, cleaning and maintenance, parking, desserts, uh, uh, production, closure, uh, personal preparation, assembly. Those were the workers who were uh, reallocated. Finally, uh, uh, the proportion of waste increase in promo and incomplete waste. This is what uh, I think Simon said. But basically, uh, the waste accounts for 1.5% uh, of the sales. So the cost of the waste increased by $34 to uh, $50 uh, uh, per week per store after the implementation. We also check uh, for uh, peak and non-peak hours, and, and we find a, a similar effect for peak and non-peak hours. Same thing for the complexity of the order. Uh, similar effects. So to conclude, the first thing I think that is fascinating is that these, the, the, the power of these non-pecuniary incentives, right, uh, to transform uh, organizations and firms. What we find here is that the, the mechanism was that, as, as you mentioned, is that managers um, reallocate uh, the scarce uh, uh, training resources uh, to the ones that to the stations that really needed uh, new workers, right? Now, the story is why you don't have a standard multitasking percent is precisely because of the complementarities uh, of these uh, production tasks. You, the key is that you have these complementarities that we have discussed between the kitchen and the counter. And but these are pair complementarities, which is very important between the kitchen and the counter and the kitchen and the drive through I think that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know if you have comments or questions. Uh, I do have a question. Uh, I keep wondering uh, when I look at the graph on the timing of the of the entrance on the on the adoption of the technology. Uh, there, it was quite heterogeneous, right? So I was wondering mm -hmm. if you could learn something from it, because uh, I, maybe you can comment on the on the decision to adopt the technology, and that can tell you a lot about the the intention of the firm, or not the firm, the, the, the actual restaurant who adopted the technology, maybe they are more competitive, uh, maybe, maybe you can learn something from the heterogeneous uh, effects on the waves. And that can yeah, uh, that, 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 the that, mechanism. That, right, that's a great point. Um, I'm writing a case uh, about the, uh, an HBS case uh, for, about these uh, leaderboard. Um, and to be honest, um, the motivation is not clear. I, I mean, I, we, we have talked uh, to the upper level managers to understand what was the motivation. And uh, um, I don't know why the motivation was not clear, but we are working on that. that, that, that that's, let me just say that that's a great point. Um, um, we only know that they, they didn't have like a rule for the rollout of the technology implementation. They just, it was pretty random. Uh, why? Well, that's that's how firms work. They, they do this pretty random. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Uh, that maybe they can self-select into this kind of stuff, and maybe you can learn something from that that self-selection. No, but, but remember that that's a good. Oh, sorry, I forgot to say that uh, the so the manager stores uh, uh, the managers of the stores basically they have the autonomy to hire new workers, fire workers, um, but this technology implementation was basically 
was not decided by the, the, the manager of the store, right? The, the, the implementation depended, uh, depended on the upper level managers. So the upper level managers uh -huh. said, we are going to start this program and we were going to start with this uh, first uh, 20 restaurants, right? So, uh, so it was not that the manager of the store can say, yes, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna compete, right? Uh -huh. uh, no, it was the upper level managers that decided, uh, okay, we will start first with these 20 stores and, 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 and so on. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yep, um, sorry. Um, so within a typical store, is the manager the only person who has to uh, uh, multitask or is there any other staff? Everyone else is specializing only doing one thing? Is that right? No, I think, no, no, no. So uh, this is what, um, close to Chris comment is that uh, workers usually have, um, they can work usually on two or three stations. And, and, and for that, they need to uh, approve uh, the, the training programs. What, what we see, I think I didn't show you that result, and that, that's a great point, is that the average number of um, training programs approved per worker increased. So it went like from 2.5 to 3.2. So, uh, so basically what the managers did is that, okay, what I, w what I had to do is to increase the skills of the of employees so that, they can, so that they can shift them from the parking to the kitchen or from the parking to the cashier, to the grill, to the, to the activities that, uh, for which you have an increase in demand, right? No, yeah, that's fine. I mean, from the training purpose, that's fine. But I'm, my question is at any given point in time, Everyone within the restaurant is only doing one thing, or they are doing multiple. Oh multiple yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 one thing, one thing. Only yeah, one sorry, thing. I, yeah, sorry that I missed that part. Yeah, only one thing. Right. Okay. They can, the manager can say, and and, and and this is very nice. We 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 went there, and what they do is that they have a spreadsheet with all the stations, and basically they say, okay, Tushar will work, will be uh, at the grill between 9 a.m. and uh, 5 p.m. And then, then uh, uh, Simon will start working at 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and so on, right? So they, they, they need to allocate the workers to all these stations. And, uh, and you can see these, uh, they have like a, a weekly uh, schedule, right? Uh, and they do these like, they, they change this uh, every week. Uh, but yeah, usually you have one worker only working at one station right it's not that they shift right and because these stores are super small so everyone is just at working at uh at, at your at, at his or her station and and, and that's it the, the store is super small so you don't see workers shuffling around the stations what you see is that <clears throat> what what managers do is that they shuffle workers across the stations but from one week to the other week, right? So previously you were working uh, uh, at the cashier, now you will work, you will help me uh, fill in potatoes. You see these changes across weeks, but not within, the, within a day, right? Okay, thank you. Ken, do you wanna go? Yes, um, you were telling us about uh, people who are stealing potatoes potatoes here, uh, ping, uh, even people, people lining up for drive through uh, I, I found that the story was all a bit coy about exactly what's going on here. I was surprised that you didn't show us some pictures of uh, these, uh, the, the, these, these functions, how it works, pictures of in the store or outside of the store, uh, happy customers or unhappy customers <laughs> for that matter. Even the leaderboard that we saw, I think that was probably cooked up. That was an Excel spreadsheet. I mean, this would be very unappealing to look at if you're a manager. So I was imagining something a little bit more refined is actually what's seen by the manager. Uh, I also have a question about with these managers, looking at these leaderboards and uh, seeing their ranking almost, I guess it's in real time or something like that. Uh, does it lead to nervous breakdowns of managers? Yeah. Okay. You know, pictures. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. I mean, um, we need to figure out uh, what the DUA says uh, <laughs> to, 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 
and check with the firm if we can include the pictures. But yeah, great suggestion. We will do that. Um, mm. uh, your second point, um, yeah, this is real time. And, 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 and we asked, what we are doing right now is that we are running a, a, a survey um, for uh, all the managers of these stores in Puerto Rico and now in Colombia to understand precisely that. Uh, I mean, the, what we've, what, I think I didn't show you the result. I don't know why I didn't include that. But we, we, what we found, we find that the turnover didn't increase and didn't increase for the managers and did not increase for, for the workers, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think we need to explore a bit more that of why is that the turnover didn't explore, didn't increase for the managers. Um, it's, it's a great point. It's a great point. And, and uh, let me say that what we are doing right now is that we are running a survey. We, of course, we, we had a, a delayed uh, because of COVID, but, 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 but we will run the survey, uh, I think next week we will do the pilot and, 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 but this is a great point. And I think we, we include that, we included that in, in this, in the survey. Precisely, the if this uh, leaderboard uh, uh, creates anxiety, and uh, and uh, we don't see that in the data, but maybe we are missing something. All right, all right. Just to follow up on that, so if suppose the workers, sorry, yeah. So if suppose the workers and the managers are not that stressed, I mean, I would look at both the stress for the worker and the manager. Uh, because, you know, the managers in your model get an incentive, but you're not modeling the effort of the workers in the line, right? So mm -hmm. some way to do that would be nice. But also, if it's not the stress, then, then you know, theoretically, if you think about why it might be improving, so one theory that comes to mind would be the efficiency wage theory, right? So somehow they're, they're feeding their, you know, employees more or better food or giving them, you know, breaks in between. So can you do something in terms of understanding why people are becoming more productive? I mean, one thing is training works, so that's pretty clear training, what you're saying, right? right? Training right. works, right. but how does it work, right? I mean, does it improve their efficiency at the job or gives them, you know, subjective well-being of some sort? Um, that'll be interesting to, to kind of- I mean, yeah, we, don't, we don't have a, a, an efficiency at the station level. So of course, we, 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 we don't know of the efficiency for this station. We only know net sales at the counter and the drive through, mm -hmm. right? Um, but that's a great point. Um, mm, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what we know. We only know that workers basically reallocate in the training efforts uh, towards uh, uh, training at the kitchen and, and, and uh, that, that, that was the key, right? And what we can say is that you will expect that efficiency will increase because of course, sales went up, right? At the counter, at the drive through. And that's what the model exactly predict. But, but, but the workers, do, do they not gain anything from the sales going up? Uh, yeah, the, remember that this firm uh, has a piece rate linear contract. Yeah. Um, and they also gain recognition. I mean, let me speculate, but I suppose that if you if if you have and, and we know that that's what I mean we know that there are stores that are, the upper level managers know that oh let's go to this store this is the superstar this is the firm that this store is always I don't know at, at the top three of the ranking uh, and when you go there they love competition they, they are very happy with the competition they are all motivated I mean um, yeah. uh, that's that's what we know, and that's why we are uh, doing this survey, um, just to understand a bit more of what's going on. Okay, is it exactly the same for the introduction of the leader? Can you repeat? Let's go one by one. So Ken, do you want to go first? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I mean, it, it could it be that, uh, if you undergo this training and you get the certification that uh, it's something that you can include on your CV so that uh, you're adding to your human capital that can be monetized in the future somehow. You go work for Maccas if you've got certification in the kitchen at your uh, fast food store. Maybe. Right. And, and you're right. And this is also uh, linked to the promotions, right? So uh, usually uh, managers are the one uh, who promote uh, their workers and uh, um, 
when we talk to these managers that, that they, the, they care a lot about that training, uh, uh, the certifications that the workers approved. And that's, uh, that's one way that you can promote uh, your workers. And that's a great point because um, basically, if, when you start uh, working at this uh, firm, you cannot work at all stations. There's a limited set of stations that, that you can work at, right? And as you uh, increase your experience there, uh, uh, basically the, the manager will promote you, right? And the one way you, you, the manager promotes you is just with new training programs, right? So now you can uh, 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 please work on these training programs so that you can help me also, uh, I don't know, peeling potatoes, right? Uh, but yeah, it's a great point. I mean, it's a human capital, it's, a, it's promotions. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's a great point. So shall we go to Krish first? But before that, Ken, uh, just a side point. These are actually Maccas. The chains, uh, the food chain that uh, where he is looking at is McDonald's. Yeah. Oh, yeah it's all been revealed oh, to me. Then. <laughs> you cannot say, you cannot you. say that, Dushar, come on. <laughs> Puerto Rico doesn't have many chains like that, dude. <laughs> it's it's easy to figure out. But uh, Chris, you heard it. Thanks. I just before and after the introduction of this new technology, are the hiring and firing practices the same? Because I mean, you've got massive, massive turnover, and you mm -hmm. can imagine mm -hmm. there's just going to be a handful of people that think, yeah, I'm going to make Macca's. Sorry, in in mystery <laughs> burger store, uh, uh -huh. I'm going to. I'm going to make a career out of this and I'm going to do everything I can. And then you've got everybody else in a hugely long tail, which you know, doesn't care and just goes along. And it's like, oh. So yeah, if I'm, if I'm incentivized as a manager, I'd be trying to get as many of the former and as few of the latter as possible, which might well change the way I go around hire. Well, I don't need to fire anybody because there's enough people leaving, but I might change my hiring practices. Right. Great point. Great point. And for managers care about a lot of these because I mean um, once you are a manager of the store uh, it's, it's very easy for you to go to the upper level managers right uh, to the upper level of, of, of management right so that's why they, they care a lot about, uh, about this public recognition right and and yeah it's a, it's a great point you, you just need to train those uh, with a with a bit of experience and turnover uh, is high and particularly for Puerto Rico uh, 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 with uh, Hurricane Maria, a lot of workers are moving to the U.S. So th this is precisely the, the 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 issue right now, right? That uh, to the U.S. I mean, yeah, to the yeah to the U.S. So this is precisely the a big issue right now is that that the workers that are coming to these stores now they, they had to uh, decrease the bar uh, uh, of the quality of, of these workers. So the managers are dealing with low quality workers, and 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 now. Uh, I think it will be very interesting to understand uh, how they are dealing with that. Right. But that's Krish. a great point, Chris. That's a great point, Chris. Um, uh, Manish, yeah. you want to go? Yeah, so uh, Jorge, I think connected to what Chris said, uh, I think it'd be a good idea for you to motivate that when the leaderboard uh, introduction uh, came through, there was no other competing technology change or uh, management change that kind of can either attenuate or uh, exacerbate what you're uh, getting in your results. Uh, yeah. It can be automation in anything uh, that may improve the, the, you know, the tag time that you're referring to. Uh, I assume probably uh, it's not a big issue, but again, if you can show, you know, that uh, there was no other change accompanying the leaderboard uh, introduction. Yeah, it's a, great, it's, a, it's a great point. And this is precisely what I'm trying to understand for the case that I'm writing right now. Um, but it, uh, honestly, I don't know why uh, with COVID, uh, uh, I don't have a good answer for, for, for this motivation. I mean, what I can show you is of course the, the, uh, the event study, the event studies, remember that you have uh, different timing, uh, across the stores and the event studies are, are very clear, right? That we don't see any pre-trend or something that you should be worried about. But, but I agree with you, it, it would be great to, to, to understand why is that they introduced this technology. Uh, if, I don't know, other uh, tools uh, didn't work, why didn't work, why is that this is working? Uh, uh, yeah, great point, thank yeah, you so I much. Mean, I would be most worried about the fact that they kind of decided to upgrade the technology of these chains 
at once. That is basically the only worry that I have that this was, you know, you have some fancy boards at the same time, some new automation. Right, 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 great point. Um, how, much, how much extra cost is associated with the, the high turnover rate? Oh, it's really, really high. Um, basically, is uh, I think it's ten percent of the income, something like and that. So, do you think that this high turnover rate has anything to do with this leaderboard? No, no, no. So, uh, I think Chris mentioned this before. That, that these yeah. industry, uh, their turnover rate is pretty high in this industry. Uh, it's close to seventy percent. What is really nice is that if you can, uh, I mean, and and the turnover rate uh, varies across. Uh, Latin American countries. So you have Argentina, for example, the turnover rate is 120%, uh, but in Chile is 30%. Why? Uh, we, we don't know, right? Uh, in Brazil, it's close to 70%. Colombia, uh, also close to uh, 80%. Uh, so that, that, but, but it's not only for uh, these chains, right? Chipotle, like all the big chains, they have the same issue. The turnover rate is pretty high. And that's why I think Chipotle has these, um, uh, this tuition program that basically Chipotle pays for, for your tuition. And what, what they, they are trying to do is just to uh, reduce uh, the turnover rate. And I think that was the main concern we, when we started uh, with this project is that the first thing I told the vice president is, oh, geez, uh, did you check what happened with the turnover rate? He said, no, uh, but we believe it's pretty constant. And, and, and we check that and yeah, you don't see uh, an increase in the turnover rate. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think that it's, it's the feature of the industry that the turnover rate is pretty high. And I think it's also related to the quality of workers that, that, that you hire, right? You, you, you hire these workers, you train them, and then they are ready to go to, to, the, to a better job, right? Uh, um, but yeah, I don't know, Chris, if you, if you wanna say uh, something, anything, about the, anything else about the turnover rate in this industry. Not particularly, thanks, but thanks for doing this. All but right. It, so, yeah, sorry. okay. No, uh, so I'll we're start. running out of time, so I'll have to formally end it here. But if you want to stay back, Jorge is with us for a few more minutes. Um, he'll answer more questions. So join me in thanking Jorge. Jorge, thank you for making time for us. And uh, hopefully next time we'll have you here in person. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everyone, for attending. All right. So I do have one question left. Go ahead. Yeah. So one thing is like, you know, I, I know you said that the turnover doesn't change, right? But uh -huh. since you're doing a survey, it'll be really nice if there is a selection going on in terms of like, you know, out selection of people who are not that risk taking and in selection of people. So is the composition changing, you know? Some people just love competition, right? Uh, the business people, right? And uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, now the choice is, okay, I could work at Chipotle, which gives me the same amount of money, but there's no competition element involved. Or I could work at McDee's and like, you know, kind of get the satisfaction from the competition, right? So, you know, maybe something to great... think about. Yeah, yeah, of course, it's a great point. Um, um... We visited, uh, let's say, um, 10 stores. And uh, I mean, of course, we were, we were with the vice president. So of course, maybe the answers that we got were uh, are biased. But, uh, uh, but uh, all of them told us that we love competition. We, we love to compete. And, uh, but they agree. Uh, that, that, that this is a great point. Maybe the, there's a selection effect. And, 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 and uh, yeah, it could be that turnover uh, didn't increase, but the problem, but, but then the, 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 the characteristics of the workers or, or the managers yeah. changed, right? Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a great point. That's a great point. All right, cool. Good presentation, Jorge, and good work, actually. Yeah. So you're doing <laughs> another one, on uh, a follow-up on this, I guess, with the survey and everything? We have three, yeah, we have three papers. So the, the, the other one is, the, um, the other one is we are, um, evaluating uh